Okay, it's Mr. Rops here, and today we're going to talk about separable differential equations. Now, what differential equations are, are just equations that contain an unknown function or more of its derivative. So we actually know a lot of differential equations, and many of the differential equations that we know are ones that look like, oh, dy dx, here's the derivative, is equal to like x squared. That's like very simple, and we didn't call them differential equations, we just like integrate them to find y. But there's lots of lots of different functions that exist where the rate of change of y is dependent upon x and maybe y and maybe like a constant plus that. So there could be the rate of change could be based upon the function itself that we don't know y and x and so there's lots of different combinations it could be. Different than derivatives, with derivatives there are rules you can follow you can always get its derivative. But when you're trying to solve differential equations and go backwards, kind of speak, there's lots of equations that we don't know how to actually solve. So solutions to differential equations are typically functions of some kind. So going back to the easiest kind that you remember, so if it's dy dx equals, let's say, x squared, well, then you would know that y would be simply y is simply like uh, one third x cubed plus c and so it's typically a function that if I would substitute this into here and take the derivative I would get the equation that would be satisfied um, but as I said this here this side of the equation gets more complicated because I could like add a y and as soon as I start making equations like this Solving them, we need to devise some different kinds of techniques than just pure integration is what we've been studying so far. And the first kind of technique we're going to have is what we call separable differential equations. So let's consider this first example. We want to find the general solution to the differential equations bt dt is equal to this scenario. And the first thing I notice right away is that there is a p here and a t on this side of the equation, which is... Uh, a little bit problematic because I don't have any tools to know how to do this. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to multiply, here's the technique, I'm going to separate the variables. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by p. And so now I have p, oh, let me try that again, so now I have p dp dt is equal to 2 over cosine squared t. So the variables are on either side of the equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to t. So that means I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to t. And so algebraically, these cancel away. And I'm just finding the integral of dp equal to, and I can even pull the 2 out, of 1 over cosine squared t dt. And so now this right-hand side of the equation is an integral in terms of t. The left-hand side is also an integral in terms of p. And so now I can simply integrate them. And so when I do this one, I know it's going to be 1 half p squared is equal to 2. And if you remember the derivative of that or the integral of 1 over cosine squared is tangent squared, and so this is just tangent squared x plus some value c. And I know there's a plus c here, and if I add it over I get a plus a different c, so I just have to write it one time. And if I now solve for p, so I make it um, explicitly defined in terms of p, I can multiply by 2, and so p squared is equal to 4 tangent squared x plus, well, 2 times a constant is still a constant. These c's are not the same, just recognize that. And then I finally take plus or minus the square root of this crazy function. And we know that we have, uh, there's our function p in terms of t. Oh, these should be t's in terms of t. Okay, and so what often happens as opposed to doing this extra step, we typically what we tend to do when we have this scenario is what we tend to do, I'll show you what we tend to do is as a po we do multiply both sides by, by t, but we also multiply by dt. Okay, and so it ends up being p dp is equal to 2 co squared t 
over dt, and then we integrate it. Now that's a bit of a short a shortcut in the, in, the, in the notation, but you'll often see people go straight to this line as opposed to showing that we're multiplying by the dt. There's our first idea here where we're separating the variables and that there's multiplication between the variable and dp and the variables, the function of the variable times this. And so then we can integrate.